Good morning, everybody. Well, if you're watching this, it'll be morning, but I'm in the afternoon filming this. I brought my tea this time, because you can see my tents right there. Everybody's pretty well. The big groups have cleared out. There's still some people out having fun on the lake. Boats pulling those floats and there's people riding on them. So if you hear them in the background, that's what's going on. Okay, so, how tough can you be? Now, we're not fighting a physical war. I've said that many times, we're fighting a spiritual war. But we have transportation. We have to get to and from our spiritual battles. We have to be physically fit to do that. Cut to exercise. <sighs> Okay, so what do you do to stay in shape? All have different ways to stay in shape. Maybe it's lifting weights, maybe it's running on a treadmill. I can't do that anymore because my knee doctor says that I'm hitting the same spot every time making it worse. So I have to go on the elliptical, the bicycle, any number of other things, but I just can't do the impact stuff. If I jog, I jog very lightly so that I don't mess up my knee. Okay, so we have a physical world that we live in. Oh, branch just fell down out of a tree behind me. Here go the boats again. <clears throat> And there are bad people out there, and you don't want to go against bad people. They will win hands down because they don't have a limit. As good people, we have limits. Now, the only way you win against bad people is if God is dealing with them. Israel is going to be all by themselves here in a little while. No one's going to help them but God. But who better to do that? So. You don't want to be tough. You don't even want to appear tough. I'm a martial artist. I've got a black belt. I like watching like Kung Fu. Carradine coming in there with that milk toast attitude. That's kind of what we associate with meekness. The meek shall inherit the earth. Really what it means is it's soft-spoken man of God. But we have the full power of God behind us. So when it comes down to how much power do we wield, we wield the power of God. Well, he does. We don't wield anything. But he's right there. So, don't go into battle without God. And when it talks about being tough, it just means being able to endure whatever's going on. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Jesus had to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. I can't imagine being physically fit enough to do that. And still then carry on a conversation at the end. Now it's like, cart me off of here and stick me with an IV. But he did it and carried on a conversation. Oh, and that meek inherit the earth thing, that's in Matthew 5, 5. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. The word there is Greek, kreos. Another form of that would be humble. I kind of see it as the opposite of arrogant, opposite of bully. 
if you're going to deliver the message, you got to be non-threatening. Because threatening puts people on their edge. You know, the fire and brimstone speeches, the preachers that do that. They scare more people. God doesn't do that. Okay. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. We haven't had the advantage, the privilege, the honor of watching Jesus. But we have people that did, and they're telling us about them. Learn from me, for I am gentle, praeos, and lowly in heart, and will find, and you will find rest for your souls. He's not going to yell at you when you sin. <coughs> Most of the time. Now, if you're just plain belligerent and just in your face, God, I'm not going to listen to you. He may yell at you. He may let somebody else yell at you, I should say. How many times was Israel conquered by other nations because they wouldn't do what they were supposed to do? <coughs> Mark 11:15. So they came to Jerusalem. And Jesus went into the temple, which was his custom, and began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple. They overturned, they, uh, or he overturned the tables uh, of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. Now, in actuality, he made a whip, but he had, I don't know, 500 or 1,000 people following him. But he was tough enough to do it. And he also cleaned out a bunch of all the other stuff that was in there to make money. So Jesus could be physically strong if he needed to be. But he spent most of his time not being. Being hung on a cross requires physical strength to not just collapse and die right off the bat. And they didn't start him there. They made him carry his cross. They beat him. So physically, he was already abused when they put him on the cross, and yet he handled it. He stayed in good physical shape. Now, they walked everywhere. There was no bus on the corner, no cabs, no Uber. Uber. <coughs> Mary's the only one that really rode a donkey for distance. Jesus, to satisfy prophecy, had a donkey brought to him as they were entering Jerusalem. So he just came from the city limits to where they were going to satisfy prophecy. Rich people had chariots and things like that, but they walked everywhere. That's why their feet were dirty when Jesus washed the feet. He says, you only need to wash the feet if you've got, had a normal day feet get dirty, the rest of the body doesn't. Second Timothy 2 1. You therefore, my child, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He gives us confidence in ourselves. Not that we can go out and do things on our own confidence that we can walk beside somebody who can. No. One person taking on a battle is tough. Two people, it's easier, especially if one's God. There's nothing in this world that can keep you down. Maybe you've worked yourself into a spot where you're not able to do things. Well, God can help you work your way out of it, but maybe it took you a long time to get there. It might take a long time to get out, but start. The minute you 
realize what you've done, start, repent, reverse the situation, and start making things better. Our boats are back. I'll throw a little bit of clip at the end. Nothing, to, nothing amazing. <laughs> People having fun. The big group next to me, why I had to go up to the pavilion, they're gone. <laughs> Get out and have fun, people. All work and no play. You gotta have some fun. It's gonna be gone here pretty soon. Joshua 1 9. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. God's omnipresent. The Spirit is in us. God the Father is omnipresent. You can't go anywhere without God. You can't get away from Him. That's Jonah. We have work to do. But you got to be of good, sound mind and body to do it. That's why it says don't be controlled by alcohol or other things. You can use it, just don't be a slave to it. Don't be so controlled by it that you're no longer responsible for your actions. Jesus turned water into wine. He wasn't against alcohol. He was against abuse of just about anything. He has for us so much that we can do, especially in these end times, especially with the world getting further and further away from God. God is raising above all that, and it's easier to spot. That's not going to be good news for the martyrs that don't make the rapture. But for now, we're okay. <clears throat> we're getting into a time where it's going to be bad. I was just listening to someone say that in China, right now, today, if you jaywalk, you get picked up on a camera. They use facial recognition. They know everything about everyone there. They know your blood type. They know your DNA. They know everything. They know your gait. If you're walking and not looking at the camera, they can still identify you. They send you a ticket for jaywalking, but they don't need you to do anything. They take that fine. They go to your bank account, and they deduct it out of your bank account automatically for you. That's in China today. This whole world under the beast is going to be, well, under the heart of the two, are going to, it's going to be that way. You won't be able to buy or sell without the mark. You can't get the mark unless you worship the beast. It's not the mark. It's not the digital money. It's worshiping the beast that will separate you from God. Don't worship the beast. Okay? Oh, this is good. This is, I just pulled this out of the cooler. It's not too bad now. I think we're probably down to about 85, but it, it got into the 90s and it said that it felt like 99 because of the humidity here. None of this dry stuff that you get out in the West. Humid here on the East Coast. Enjoy your life. You've only got one. We don't come back. It's two destinations. And if you're a Christian, you're going to heaven, so you've got to have high hopes for that. We're still here. We've been blowing past holidays. We're still here told you before, the Revelation 12 sign has a seven-year anniversary this fall. We want 
a sign, that would be a really good sign for something big, whatever it is. But the rapture doesn't have to have a time or a date or a festival, anything like that. It's open. So it could be any time. But I would expect something big sometime this fall. If we get to that, we still have an election year. We have all kinds of things. Obama had to leave Biden off the stage because Biden didn't know where he was at. It's the craziest world. But get out and enjoy it. And stay fit doing so. Find things you enjoy doing. Till we meet in the clouds. God bless. Having fun on the lake.